Hey what's up guys, so we're learning how to create a small state machine that is going to filter our inputs that we give by either inputting stuff on the keyboard or a joystick and then we take that and we turn that into a movement for our player, just like this. Alright so without further ado let's get started. Alright so this time we're going to create a new folder inside of the script folder. We'll call this one Mutter, and inside of there we're going to create a new c -sharp script called Base Mutter. This is going to be the base of every single uh, character controller system. So the enemy is going to use it, the player is going to use it, the boss are going to be using it, and any other NPC that sticks to the ground. So let's get started with this. So we're going to assign some fields that every motor is going to have. So we're going to start with a character controller make sure it is protected so protected character controller and we're going to say controller and then also do a protected transform and this is going to be this transform just for good practice we're going to keep a reference to our own transform and then just below that some more fun fields so this is private float base speed that I'm going to assign to 5 for now if my keyboard starts acting like a real keyboard. Alright, so then we're going to say private float base gravity that is going to be equal to 25 for now and just below that so so we have access to these so these ones are private and to access these I'm going to say public float speed with a capital S because this is a property so speed and we're going to say get return base speed and the reason I'm doing it this way is uh, if later on we have a speed modifier I can simply go in here and add it to the speed uh, property so return base speed plus speed modifier but right now we don't have one so I'm just going to remove it and leave it be so just below that copy paste your line and we're going to say public float gravity and we're going to return the base gravity and now we need one more field and this is going to be the most important field of all it is going to, to be the public vector 3 move vector which is also a property so make sure it has a capital letter this one is going to be a set get and we're going to leave it just like that because we're going to be calculating it every single frame alright so we got these field now but they're not really assigned so these two are in need of a reference so to do that we're going to go below here and say protected virtual void start and during the start we'll say controller is equal to game object dot add component character controller also this transform is going to equal transform okay so we got reference now in these now we need to move our character and since moving the character is going to be a little bit different for every single motor what I'm going to be doing here is I am going to go down here and say public I uh, wait never mind I'm going to say protected abstract void update mutter so update mutter like this and the reason I do this is because I want every single children of base mutter to implement the update mutter function because they're all going to have a different way to update themselves and I can simply put this now in the private void update and I will call update mutter in here so just like this now every single frame it is going to call the update mother function which is going to be defined in the children alright so let's go in the children actually but we don't have one just yet oh wait 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 we have an error so here it says bay mother update is abstract so we got a abstract function but the class isn't abstract so it does not work so make sure you take the abstract keyword copy paste and put it up here so this is now a public abstract class base mother okay good 
Now this error is fixed and we were about to create a children of this script so make sure you go in the mother folder create a new C sharp script call this one player mother and this is going to contain everything that is player specific when it comes down to moving the character so and also it's going to contain the um, protected override void update mother function wait no, not update update mother function going to zoom in a bit so it has to implement this that is for sure and also I forgot but make sure this inherits from base mother so I was saying um, this is going to implement everything that the other mothers are not going to be implementing such as the private vector3 input direction and this function is going to get the input from either the keyboard or a controller that you're plugging in. Eventually we're going to have a controller on my side but I'm going to be doing that at the very very end so for those of you who don't have a controller you still have uh, you still you, you can still use the keyboard and also the mouse okay so I'm going to code this one really fast because it's fairly simple I'm going to say vector3 direction is going to equal vector3.0 so we clean our um, we clean our direction vector at first and our direction vector is what we're going to return so let's go ahead and do that right now return direction now we say direction dot x is going to equal input dot get axis and for the x we are getting the horizontal axis copy this face and then the second one is direction dot z remember that in unity the z axis is the one forward and the y axis is the one that goes up so we don't want our inputs to go up we want our inputs to go on a flat 2D surface. Alright, so direction.z is equal to input.getAxis vertical. Also, make sure we uh, make sure the vector is no longer than one. So direction that magnitude is bigger than one. If that's the case, we're going to say direction.normalize. Make sure you take the one with a capital letter. And then it, it is a function, so you open and close the parentheses. Good, so this is all we need for this input direction function. Okay, so we're finally at the part where we're moving our characters. So when we do that, what we are going to be doing uh, in reality is we're going to start by getting the inputs. So get the input. And in order to do that, we're going to say move vector is going to equal input direction and then we need to send the input to a filter and I'll explain this in a second um, in fact what we need to do here is now that we have our inputs we need to we need some kind of filter to decide what it does with it so say we're in the air we're falling we don't necessarily want our input to have an effect on the direction of our character but if we're walking we want to make sure that this input is also transferred to our character say we're swimming we want it to have a little bit less impact or go a little bit slower so <clears throat> we really need a filter here and the filter is going to be a state machine which we will Im implement in a second it's going to be a fairly simple one so send the input to a filter we don't have this one just yet so we just leave it blank for now and then all we need to do is move we need to move our character simple as that but we also don't have a way to do that right now and in fact we do but I'd like to implement it in the base motor so uh, let's do the move one first let's go in the base motor so double click on base motor hit F12 by doing that you're going to jump directly to the script and below my update what I'm going to be doing here is uh, <clears throat> I'm going to declare a function that is going to be protected virtual void and I'm going to call it move and it's simply going to contain a controller dot move move vector times time dot delta time that's all it's going to contain here 
Okay. So the reason I did that is just because I want to be able to read my update uh, mutter really clearly so I know exactly what's going on and when. And also it is virtual void so I can change the way uh, this function works in children's scripts later on if I want to. Okay, so the move part is completed. All we have to do is call move just like this. And now we have to get started on the state machine. This is all we need to finally get the movement to our player. In order to do so, I'll go back in the Unity engine and I will create a new folder under motor. So this one is going to be called state and I am going to create a C sharp script called base state. That's going to be a little bit similar to the motor, but this is going to be the states of our state machine or of our uh, motor actually. So public class base state, we are going to inherit from model behavior, yes but we're going to wipe this function right here and well the first thing we want in a state like this is we want a reference to our mother so protected base mother mother and this is pretty much all the fields we're going to need for now now I'm going to declare a little region I'm going to call base state implementation and in there I'll put the really important function uh, for the state machine so uh, for a state machine, what you need is for each state you need a function to be called when you're where, uh, you're creating it. You need another function for when you're destroying it, and also a function that checks if it needs to be changed. So let's do that right now. Let's create a public virtual void. We're going to call construct, and this is obviously what is going to be called whenever we create a function or uh, create a state and also we are going to have another one public virtual void destruct again this is what is going to be called when we destroy the state and finally public virtual void transition transition I can't write today and this is a function that's going to be called every frame checking if we need to change our current state okay so for construct right now we're simply going to say mother is going to equal get component base motor so every time we change state we're going to get the reference back now for destroy every time we want to destroy actually for destruct every time we want to destroy a state we are going to call the destroy this call. This way destroy the mono behavior scripts that is going to be on top of our object. And simply just cleaning up. Alright. Okay, so this is pretty much all we need to have the state machine, but now we have some specifics here. We need to um, calculate a movement for our state machine because this is a movement state machine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a public abstract again. So public abstract vector3, I'm going to call process motion. And it's going to take a input vector in reference. And again, since we have a abstract function now, it is now an abstract class. So make sure you take this keyword, put it up here. And we are now unable to instantiate this by itself we need to go by its children's okay and then just for the sake of it I create a public virtual this time quaternion that is going to be called process rotation taking as parameter another vector 3 input and uh, since this is not an abstract one we can give it a uh, we can give it a function we can actually code this one and we're simply going to say return transform dot rotation. The reason I'm not making this abstract is because we are not going to need to process we're not not process we're not going to need a different process rotation for every single state. But sometime we want a specific state to rotate the player in a different way, but not all the time. Uh, for every state though we always want a state to calculate the position differently from another one so this is why this is abstract 
this is force upon the children of base state to be implemented so it has to be and now if we save this well <laughs> we still don't have a state but we have a base state so let's go ahead and just create ourselves a state go in create c sharp script and we're going to create a simple walking state and we're not even going to code it uh, completely we're simply going to put the bare minimum so it works and we can understand how our state machine works so public class walking state we're going to inherit from base state and in there it's, it's gonna be really really simple so if you remember correctly in base state we have an abstract class that we have to declare it is process motion so we're going to say uh, in fact protected override process motion and all we're going to be doing for a walking state is we're going to take whatever the player gives us on the joystick and we're simply going to multiply it by a certain speed so we're going to say return input times mutter dot speed oh and it doesn't doesn't take parentheses because it's a property and that's all we need for the walking state um, for now a little bit later on we'll have some gravity we'll make sure that it follows the ground properly and all that kind of good stuff but just for testing purpose and because we've did enough coding for now let's just go ahead and put this player motor strip right on top of our cube or player and then hit play and as you can see now I'm actually moving but at really slow speed so I think we have an error somewhere oh actually we didn't <laughs> we didn't fail this so I was moving but I was moving with the uh, direct input so move vector input direction and it just stopped there now what we need to do is we need to feed our move vector so move vector dot nothing actually move vector is going to equal state and we don't even have a state so let's hold on a little bit let's just go back and let's go back to our base motor and our base motor we're going to say protected base state state now we have a reference to a certain state that our motor is in and also we right now it's assigned to null so make sure we put something in there in the start down here we'll say state is equal to game object that add component and we're simply going to start by adding the walking state and then when we do add a state we have to call the state dot construct and now this should create a state a walking state on top of our player motor and then construct it and if we go back actually in our player motor we can finally fill this little blank here and we're going to say move vector is going to equal state dot process motion and we feed him the move vector again alright so let's try this one more time and it is working properly with the good speed this time and we are actually filtering our input with the walking state if you check on our player right now as you can see we have the player motor but we also have the walking state right here that has been spawned and that is now filtering our inputs so that's pretty much it for this episode guys thanks for watching and I will see you next time